This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. It can be very painful when one dies or when one leaves. We mourn. This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're dealing with joy, and I want you to understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There's a scripture that says, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Right. And they that sow in tears will reap in joy. So I want you to hear how God wants to minister joy to his people. Years ago, when my father passed away, I was standing in the bedroom, right next to the bed, and I had just prayed for him, and I kissed him on his forehead. He drew his last breath. Now, when he drew his last breath, his eyes popped open, went in a complete circle, and fixed his pupils dilated when his spirit left his body. So I had a, a it was extremely painful at the moment seeing him pass away. As painful as that was. As close as my father and I were, we were thick as thieves. I mean, my father understood me. I understood him. We were very tight. I got him saved. I led him to the Lord two weeks after he came home. He saw the change in me and knew there was a God. Over 81, he gave his heart to the Lord at the dining room table. Now, what I want to share with you is what happened after he passed away. The church folks came over, the pastor, my family, they prayed for me. We we all went together to the hospital. We went to the hospital. They called me in a room because at that point, I didn't know if they revived him or not. So they called me in the room. When they call you in the room, that's a bad sign. But they called me in the room And they commenced to telling me that my father had passed. So the pastor told me, I want you to see what a person looks like after they're gone. I said, I don't want to see him dead. He said, no, I want you to see the peace on a saint's face when they go to be with the Lord. He took me in that room and my father looked like he was laid back, (laughs) snoring his (laughs) He looked so adorable. I just wanted to pick him up in my arms and hold him. He looks so adorable. So I said, I got to hold him. It's been months since I could hold him because he had the breathing issue. So I held him up in my arms and I kissed his forehead and stayed up. His eyebrows stayed up. I'm like, oh my goodness. Now, all of that transpired. Everybody goes home to their neutral corners. And my sister and niece and I, decide not to go home, but to drive up to the park and watch the sun come up and listen to the birds tweeting at Farnsworth Park. So we sit there in the car and all of a sudden I experienced, I want you to understand how God ministers to people when they're going through a very painful situation. God just wants down on me this supernatural peace that passes all understanding. And my heart was flooded with this joy. I mean, it was like, oh my goodness, how could I feel this wonderful after experiencing something so horrendous? So I'm sitting there describing to my sister and my niece what I felt like. I said, I feel like God took me out of this world, took me to outer space, where everything is completely silent and still. And I feel nothing but this overwhelming peace. It was so magnificent, so surprising, so serene, so comforting. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know God would do something like that. So that was a surprise. And what I want to share with you, is when you're going through your darkest hour, that's when you can expect 
to see God show up. You can expect to see him there because he's drawn by that. Now, listen, what I noticed is not only does God remove the pain of death, he comforts those that mourn. And many of us mourn relationships. Now, let me share another one with you. I'm sharing this message via testimony because I lived this stuff. And that's why I can speak with such conviction. My first husband that I divorced, from the second month to the last month of our marriage, that was from the second month of our marriage to the eighth year, committed adultery continuously. For the first three years, I suffered from shame, embarrassment, hurt, feelings of betrayal, the whole nine yards. Now, check this out. After all that took place, I finally got to the point where I got tired. Sometimes we have to get tired of being sick and tired. And I went out in the backyard, looked up at the stars and the moon, and had a little chit-chat, a little powwow with God. And I said, Lord, I've carried this long enough. I look like the Goodyear blimp. I'm eating myself into the grave. I'm worrying myself to death. I'm full of anxiety. I'm hurting. I'm distressed. I'm full of anxiety. I just don't like the way I'm feeling. You gave me joy. You gave me peace. I want all of it back. So this is what I'm going to do. I took my hand and I gestured. I said, Lord, here, take the hurt. Take it out of my heart. I'm tired of hurting. Here, Lord. Take the rejection. I feel totally rejected. Here's the betrayal. I feel betrayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, here, it, it, here are the feelings of insecurity and, and inadequacy. I give you all of that. I also give you the adultery that my, that my husband is committing. I give you my husband in the name of Jesus. I give you this marriage, Lord. Take it all, because it's too heavy for me. I don't want to carry this anymore. I don't want to hurt anymore. And I'm asking you to heal me, restore me to the joy of my salvation, fill me with your peace, and let me live my life no matter what. Third year of my marriage. Adultery hadn't come to an end. Nothing had changed. It continued to get worse. But guess what? Very next day, he came home, guilt written all over his face. And guess what I felt when I looked at him? Peace, peace, wonderful peace, flowing down from the Father above. And it swept over my spirit mm, and fathomless billows of love. I felt no pain, I felt no jealousy, I felt no betrayal, I felt no sadness, I felt no disappointment. I was full of joy unspeakable and full of glory. From that day forward, I never felt an ounce of pain. I would see him come home, anoint him with oil, pray for him, I uh, asked the Lord to forgive him, and I was on my merry way. We were friends. We got along just fine because his problem was no longer mine. Hello. And when the Lord said, it's time, that's when I divorced him. Five more years later, living in blissful joy, living in blissful peace totally unscathed by the ugly situation that continued to deteriorate to the point where he got a full-blown extramarital affair and got a little girlfriend. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I was fine as wine. Drove up one day. Oh, listen to this. Show you how God can change you in the situation without changing the problem. My friend Eleanor and I drove up in front of the house. God is good, I'm telling you. He is able. Pull up in front of the house. I jump out. We just left church. I jump out to go in the house to get my shoes. Now, I had to walk past something that even my neighbor across the street thought was going to create a scene. But I was at peace. I was full of joy. I was content. Not my problem, right? What did I see as I was going in my house? My ex-husband on his knees, arms in the window of his girlfriend's car, parked right there in front of my house. So I could put two and two together. They probably got it on while I was at church. Oh, well, I went on in the house, got my shoes, changed my shoes, you know, to something more comfortable. Came on out, waved at them both, and got in the car, and Eleanor and I took off. Now, the comical part was I was fine. My friend, on the other hand, was seething. She was like a boiling pot. She looked like she wanted to run them both over. It was the funniest thing to watch. <clears throat> and I said, Eleanor, <clears throat> come on, girl. I'm fine. Let's go on to the restaurant and have a good time. I was literally fine. I felt no pain. I felt no, oh, how dare he? I didn't feel any of that. God had me completely settled. Mm. He will establish. He will strengthen. He will settle you. And the problems don't have to get under your skin. You hear me? They don't have to get under your skin. They don't have to come near you. You can go through the flood and not be drowned. You can go through the fire and not be burnt. Why? The grace of God, his grace is sufficient. That's that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah, that's that medicine he gives out. It totally kills all pain, kills all hurt, kills all infection. When God heals, baby, he heals to the utmost. Oh. Okay, now, those are the two examples I wanted to share with you. So I want to encourage you, when you are going through these kind of situations, number one, tell God exactly how you feel about it. Number two, ask God to enable you to forgive. Number three, start gesturing and giving every single thing you're dealing with to God, relinquish it all, let it go, and then do as the song says, keep on trucking, baby, yes, you got to keep on trucking, that's right, because God has your destiny laid out before you, and if you stay in your path, and if you stay in your calling, and if you stay on assignment, your life will continually be blessed while all hell is going on around you. What does Psalms 91 say? A thousand shall fall at thy side. Yeah. And 10,000 at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. You're untouchable, baby. You're impervious to the pains of this world. When you relinquish it all to God, yes, you have the right to hurt. Yes, you have the right to be jealous. Yes, you have the right to mourn. But do you really want to? You don't have to. Death, where is thy sting? Ah, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, come on, give me a break. Hmm, ain't no victory. Not in death. Ain't no sting. No. Because God's got you, baby, in the palm of his hands. Oh, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains be tossed into the sea. And I must read it for you. God is our refuge and strength, a very 
present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Mm. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease. Unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I'm going to end with that. You be encouraged. God is on your side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? You can't have the coronavirus against you. You can't have death come against you. You can't have broken relationships come against you. You can't have job loss come against you. You can't have foreclosure come against you. No, doesn't matter what's going on. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad, that's joy, y'all, shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. You be encouraged. God is right there. He's a very present help. He's waiting with bated breath for you to pour your heart out to him. Let him have the good. Let him have the bad. Let him have the ugly. Regurgitate all that poison. Get it out. Regurgitate all the bitterness. Get it out. And ask God to take it all out. Relinquish it. You have the right, but you don't need to. It's not right to keep all that in your heart. So let it go. Give it to him. Ask God to take it. If you can't let it go, ask him to yank it out of you so you can enjoy the joy of your salvation, the peace that passes all understanding because God heals the broken in heart. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is your refuge, your very present help, and your healer. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, right? But what does the word say? The Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen.